May I invite Dr. Ren, Dr. Ren Wang, the special advisor to the chairman of the Beijing Genomics Institute, to the stage. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, uh, our chair lady did not introduce my another title, that is, I used to serve as the CGIR director and also the former assistant director general of the uh, Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN. And uh, also following from uh, what we heard from uh, Dr. Swaminathan, and I actually consider myself as a student of Dr. Swaminathan and uh, Dr. Norman Bollock, whom I used to accompany uh, to field trips in China. And uh, following what they said, and that reminded us, the original mandate of uh, FAO, and for that matter also the CGI, was a simple and straightforward. That is to increase the agricultural productivity in order to achieve food security in the world. And as we all know, uh, FAO stated that by end of last year, actually the number of hungry people in the world has risen. And uh, it has reached uh, two, uh, 821 million by end of last year from uh, around 804 million in 2016. And we have heard so much about um, micronutrient deficiencies and obesity in this uh, workshop. So we all realize that the world has changed, so have FAO and CGIR. And some old challenges remain, and there are numerous new challenges ahead of us. And let me just highlight a few that I regard as relevant to my talk here today. And uh, as we know, today 75% or nearly 75% of the food that we eat is from only 12 plant species and probably five animal species. And also the plant diversity, as we appreciate, will be the source of food for the future. And that is why that I really applaud FAO's uh, initiative on the future food, which is championed by the FAO RAP, that is the Regional Office for Asia Pacific. And many of us have uh, heard about that initiative today. Also, zoonotic diseases. And today, seven out of every 10 human diseases are of animal origin. And also the challenges uh, of uh, urbanization, as we know. So, the national governments, international organizations, and the people are questing the missing pieces to this puzzle. And, uh, and today's food and agriculture needs a transformative change. And that is a sort of a motto or slogan that we have been calling for in FAO, in the World Bank, in the CGIR, and the communities. But what is needed now, as we have the theme of this session today that I also personally believe that we got to look into innovations. Innovation has been proven to be a driver of such a change and for economic growth of uh, many countries, okay, especially the developing world. From my own country, my home country, China, that we have proven in China in the past 40 years that uh, innovation has been a driver for, for the development. Now, Last week, FAO organized in its headquarters uh, the first, actually, the International Symposium on Agriculture Innovation for Family Farmers, okay? And here uh, are some of the key messages or outcomes of that symposium. Now, by the way, that symposium was expected to have like 400 people and ended up with uh, more than 600 participants from around the world. And there were a high-level segment of the ministers, and also the Director General, Glaciano da Silva, was in the beginning and the, at the end. Okay, so it was a successful event. Some of the key messages, first of all, putting family farmers at the center of innovation. So in other words, we cannot say, as we actually often hear, that the innovation for family farmers, no, that is not enough. Family farmers got to be put in the center as a partic participating part and also a major player. The importance of bridging institutions in order to facilitate networking and the multi-stakeholder dialogue for, for reaching out and for scaling up or scaling out. And uh, the third is a need for increased investment in public research and education. And uh, also a holistic approach and integrated policies to create an enabling environment, which is extremely important 
And uh, the youth and the women are the central force for agriculture innovation, which was highly demonstrated in that symposium held last week in Rome. And there was even a special session for the youth, which was networked uh, with uh, some universities around the world, attending in a sort of virtual way. And the urgent need for investment from the government and other stakeholders in training to develop the next generation of innovators. Okay. And last but not least, there's an urgent need to enable family farmers to adapt and innovate in the use of new technologies. We got to look into really the application of these new technologies in a local context. So let me uh, just highlight some of the, well, one particular issue actually that I have come across to, that is the uh, integration of uh, new technologies with enabling policies and the business models to tackle the health-related rural poverty in China. In the cases of uh, prevention and control of achinococcus, which is a parasitic disease, and the thalassemia, which is a form of anemia also. And uh, really the key here for, my, uh, for this uh, case is in order to detect these diseases at an early stage and the low false positives and cover the larger population. Okay. Now, Sanji, a 15-year-old girl in Qinghai province, affected with achinococcus, died at 15 years old. And uh, <clears throat> Archinococcus is one of the 17 neglected tropical diseases raised by the WHO. And there are two types. And the one major characteristic of this disease is, is, is uh, it's a long hibernation period. It may take several years before the symptom shows in the, in the patient. And there's a total of around, let's say, one million people are at high risk of these diseases. And it is uh, costing like around three billion US dollars to compensate the life, uh, livestock sector because uh, the livestock as an intermediate host of this disease. And uh, here's another case, a girl, uh, Xiao Yu, uh, in Guangxi province, southwest of China, uh, a, a patient of the beta thalassemia major uh, disease. Uh, this is showing some of the living uh, situations. And uh, the thalassemia is the most common genetic disease in southern China, and also a common cause of rural poverty, like in Guang, Guangdong province, 16.8% of the population uh, are the carriers or gene carriers of this disease. Now, there are two ways of sort of treating this disease. One is, uh, 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 let's say, blood transfusion, and the other one is a bone uh, marrow uh, a treatment, but both are highly costly, especially in provinces and in China where medical insurance does not cover or not fully cover these diseases or the treatment. So the, key, the highlight here is this interesting model that BGI, actually is the Beijing Genomics Institute, has been associated with of working with local governments and insurance companies to develop this innovative business, business model or practical model to cover uh, the costs of treating the, or screening for these uh, uh, disease carriers. And uh, as we can see on the slide, that in two places, Shenzhen, which is a cosmopolitan city, and Changsha, which is the capital of Hunan province in central China. Now, the number of births in last year in Shenzhen, for instance, is 240,000 people. And uh, there is insurance coverage of, of partial coverage of the treatment or screening for this disease. And uh, so the government subsidy covers, uh, provides 43 US dollars per case. And uh, also the insurance covers uh, 80%. I mean, $80 per case. Whereas the BGI, as a technology provider of this uh, screening, provides the lowest cost. So that is the combination, the integration model. And with that, there has been a large number of screened, as highlighted here uh, in China, 263,000 people screened for thalassemia, and uh, nearly a million people screened for this uh, achinococcus diseases. So, also, that is really in the context of the Chinese government determination of lifting another further 30 million people out of poverty in the next 
three years, and note here that 42% of these people and the poverty are health-related poverty. Okay, so it is so important, as you can see, the integration of the technologies with the business models. And uh, I'm running out of time, but just quickly showing you, in 2003, when the President of the United States and the Prime Minister of the UK announced the successful completion of the first human genome sequencing, it was an effort of six, six countries at a cost of three and a half billion dollars, and after 13 years, and then by end of last year, as you can see on the slide, that the cost for whole genome sequencing was dropped already to $600 per genome. And we are looking at, not in the too distant future, around maybe $100, you will have your whole genome sequencing done. And about three weeks ago, the BGI launched in Shenzhen the world fastest genome sequencer, which can have a maximum data output of six terabytes, and that is to complete the whole genome sequencing of 60 people in one day. You know, this is the technology development is enormous. So let me close in by uh, offering three sort of take home messages. Technological innovations are changing the world and our mindset got to change. We have to embrace these, you know, the, the suitable, let's say, new technologies in the context of local uh, situations. Innovations in science and technology must be accompanied by innovative business models or practical models and broad partnerships, okay? And innovation can be a powerful driver for poverty reduction and economic development in the developing country, but it needs the support and the enabling policies and investment from the national as well as local governments. So that is my sort of a key message. I want to thank you very much for your attention.